Okay, this is going to be part three in my series on using the Alpaca Online Brokerage in Lumibot to create a trading bot based on some sort of algorithm. And uh, if you haven't seen the first two videos, you're probably going to want to watch them or at least part of them um, before you can get the most out of this video. All right, so I do assume that you have some knowledge about Alpaca and Lumibot before uh, you can sort of get the gist of what's going on in, in this video. All right, and I'll just start by saying that the video is for educational purposes only. Uh, it is not a recommendation for trading or any particular strategy. Okay, so before I talk about the code, I want to talk about what we're going to be doing here. And so uh, we're going to create a trend following strategy where we generate a trading signal based on a simple moving average crossover. All right, so I went ahead and generated a file so you can see what I'm talking about here. All right, so I went ahead and got some data. All right, and uh, for this, I'm using the gold ETF. So we're going to sort of trend follow gold. And it's going to be a relatively short term trend. All right, so I just have some closing prices. And then I have a fast moving average here. It's a nine day moving average. And then a slower 21 day moving average. And so we generate a buy or a sell signal based on where this 21, excuse me, this nine day moving average is relative to the 21. All right, so we're going to meet two conditions here so that we get periodic buy or sells. All right, so if the nine day is a above the 21 day and on the previous day it was below the 21 day then we would generate a buy all right and then the opposite is also true so when the nine day moves below the 21 day and it was above the 21 day on the previous day like it was here uh, we get a sell signal all right so in this example right we're going to be short for a number of days and then we're going to close that short position go long all right, for a little bit longer, right? And then uh, we get down here and we're gonna close the long and go short. All right, so that's how it's gonna work. All right, and then rather than writing a bunch of this code live, I'm just gonna talk about the code that I wrote here. All right, so going in here, right, I'm getting some uh, login credentials for Alpaca. All right, I'm going to be using date time, and I'm going to use that to do the back testing. All right, uh, Lumibot has implemented a couple of different mechanisms for back testing. You can use the Yahoo Finance API for data, or you can get your own data from any source and you know download it into a Pandas data frame and then do the back testing there. All right, I'm going to get the Yahoo Finance data. All right, and then. Uh, the next line here, I'm going to tell it what brokerage I'm using. So I'm using Alpaca. Uh, they have a few other brokerages that it will work with. All right. But yep, I'm using Alpaca. And then uh, the main thing I need here is the strategy. So this is how I implement a trading bot. And then uh, the trader uh, makes the connection to Alpaca and starts placing trades based on the output from uh, whatever strategy we develop. Okay, I have to do some data processing with NumPy and Pandas to get my trading signals. All right, with all that importing done, I created a class here and I just called it trend. You can call it whatever you want. It inherits from the Lumibot strategy class. All right, and then again, if you watch the first two videos, I talk about some of the methods that are in strategy, all right? One of them is initialize and then the main trading logic goes in on trading iteration, but there's lots of different ways you can implement these things uh, beyond just initializing something and then periodically telling it to go and, and look for data and do something. All right. So in initialize, right, I'm setting a few global variables here. All right. And I mean, arbitrarily, the date is set at uh, January 1st. Uh, I could set that at any date. All right. Uh, I want to uh, initialize a signal here and it's going to be no signal so that signal is whether or not we should be placing an order and then I'm going to tell it how often to run so this can be anything from once a day once a minute uh, once every few seconds whatever you like all right so I'm just going to run this thing once a day though all right and then the main trading logic goes here inside on trading iteration all right so the first thing I do is go out and get some historical data, all right, I'm getting this data, the live data from Alpaca, and I'm just going back 22 days, all right, that's all the data I need to generate this trading signal, 
All right, so I basically need those last two rows to check, all right, what's the current status is the nine day above or below, and what's the previous day's status. All right, and when those are in opposite directions, uh, I'm gonna get a signal either buy or sell. So once I have the data, I set a variable, call it gold, all right, and then there's a method uh, that comes from this get historical prices. It's an annotated method, so I just call DF, and it translates that data that it got from Alpaca into a pandas data frame. Uh, next thing I did, uh, yeah, and if you want, you could use another API, all right? So it makes sense for me to just use the, the built-in Alpaca API. This line of code that's commented out, um, you can just eliminate that, or if you wanted to, you could go uh, get it from your own data provider. All right, so once we have the data, I'm gonna start adding a column. So there's my nine day moving average, 21 day moving average, and then here's the logic for that signal column. All right, so basically I wanna check, is the nine day above the 21 day? And on the previous day here, uh, was it below? And when both those things are true, I'm gonna put a buy, otherwise I'm gonna say a none. Okay, and then to get the sell signal, we're doing almost the same thing, going in the opposite direction, all right? But I don't wanna overwrite the already buy signals that are potentially there, all right? So once we check and see if it's in the opposite direction, nine days below the 21 day, and the previous day it was above, right? Uh, we're gonna set a sell, and otherwise we're gonna just leave whatever's in the current cell, uh, sorry, the current signal column there. All right, so now once we have our signal, we can start thinking about trading. Every day we generate this new signal, right? I'm just gonna set the symbol as gold. You can do this with any security you want. All right, I'm gonna arbitrarily decide that I'm gonna buy or sell 200 shares. You can set that at any uh, number you want. And then I'm just going to uh, do some if logic to figure out if I should place a buy or a sell. All right, so with this algorithm, most of the time we're gonna be in the market, all right? We're not gonna be in it all the time, but uh, most of the time we're either gonna be long or short. So first thing I'm gonna do is check to see if I should buy. And before I buy, I wanna make sure that uh, I don't already have a short position. So I'm gonna go out, use a built-in method to get the position on the symbol. This looks at Alpaca and it tells me, okay, do you have any gold? And uh, if I do, then I'm gonna close it. And so sell all will close either a long or short position. All right, and then uh, next thing I'm gonna do is create an order because it's time to buy, and uh, I'm gonna submit that order, okay? Then the opposite side of this is gonna be, uh, did we get a sell signal? And if we got a sell signal, do we already have a position? If we already have a position, we close it, all right? And then, yep, the only difference here is instead of uh, submitting a buy order, we're submitting a sell order to go short. All right, and then down at the bottom, I sort of put in the logic. And like I said, we're not gonna go live with this because, well, it only runs once a day, and so we'd be sitting here for days to see if we actually place to trade. All right, but what we're gonna do is back test it to see if it's even worthwhile to try this strategy. All right, so once you find a strategy that you like, all right, that means you created an algorithm, right? Maybe you use different moving averages, maybe you use a different sort of trend following strategy. Uh, you would switch this trade to true, and then uh, you would connect to Alpaca and start running this bot. All right, so this one I would just sort of, once I get it the way I want, I would just change this to true and then just let it run. And I guess monitor my online account to make sure that nothing really bad happens. All right, but we're just gonna back test it. So down here, the switch else is gonna run since I have this turned to false. And uh, I'm gonna plug in that Yahoo back testing. And uh, why don't we go ahead and try this? Okay, so it's running the back test here. And I'm gonna make all this code available on GitHub and I'll put a link in the video so you didn't have to type furiously. All right, so once this back test is done, we're gonna get a few outputs. We'll get one to the screen here that just tells us high level, and then we'll get a couple of graphical outputs. All right, so here's how the strategy performed, right? So we, let me go back to that, and I'll come back to this in a second. So here's one of those graphics, and then it will also uh, generate a more comprehensive report. All right, so here's what happened at a high level over that one year period. We made about 5%. All right, versus if we had just uh, invested S&P 500, we would have lost about 4%. So, okay, from that standpoint, it looks like it's reasonable. At least it outperformed the S&P 500. 
All right, again, you probably want to play around with the parameters to see if you can do better. Maybe you want to back test a longer period of time to see if it really works well over a longer period of time, right? If it really outperforms S&P 500, those kinds of things. All right, but at least this gives you a place to start. All right, let's go ahead and look at those graphics because they're probably done by now. And uh, yep, they're there. Let me go back to that first one. All right, so this one is generated by, well, both of them are generated by Lumabot, uh, but this is an in-house graphic that shows you basically your equity line and uh, when you were long and when you were short. All right, and so you can basically just see cash position look like at those times. So there we went short, right? Here we went long and, and so forth. And then here's what S&P 500 did. And then here's what your strategy did. All right, so we end up uh, and we are, uh, we're long as of the end of that back test. All right, who knows where it's gonna go. All right, let's take a look at the more comprehensive report. This one comes from Quant Stats, And yeah, we just get a lot more data points here to look at. All right, so again, there's our equity line and uh, it's just done in terms of percentages here rather than uh, absolute values. And as we scroll down through, uh, we get as much information about this trading strategy is probably we want. All right, and yeah, I have a I have another video that goes comprehensively into what's going on with quant stats. You can use it independently of Lumibot if you want. All right, so you might want to watch that video. Uh, I'll probably put a link for that in the description as well. So uh, hopefully that helps you get started uh, implementing some kind of trend following strategy uh, with Lumibot on Alpaca.